Welcome to the Brick and Block Podcast for Growing Your Masonry Business. This episode is Masonry Marketing 1A, which is Coach Gary's top 10 list, Basic Marketing Survival for Mason Contractors. Hey team, Coach Gary here. You've heard me say that if you're a part of the masonry side of the construction industry, whether contractor, material, or service supplier, as an owner or employee, however you make your living, you understand how important it is that your company continue to grow and prosper. And growing your masonry business is what this podcast is all about. The focus of our podcast is different. Remember, you are not simply in the masonry business, but you are in the business of marketing and growing your company. Face it, your crews may be great, but so are the crews of your competitors. If the work of every company passes inspection and it's all done on time and on budget, then there's a perceived same quality level of the work. So how do you get ahead of everybody? One way is to out-hustle them, or as the TV show Survivor says, outwit, outlast, outplay. To which I will add, out-market. The Brick and Block podcast is comprised of these four elements. Audio versions of my monthly columns, interviews with movers and shakers of our industry, project management guidance, and masonry marketing magic, tonight's subject. My promise about masonry marketing 1A, basic marketing for business survival, is this. Not some how-to-do-it info or course, but the why-to-do-it stuff. Stuff that, that owners and leaders should know, helping to avoid common mistakes and to correctly direct your people. Today's episode is the first installment of Masonry Marketing. This episode is titled, The Mason Contractor's Checklist of Absolutely, Positively Required Basic Marketing for Business Survival. And there's a lot of valuable information, but don't worry about taking notes. I've done that for you, and I've, I have them condensed into a two-page checklist and summary. So just email me after the show, Brick and block podcast at gmail.com. I'll get them to you. It's very valuable, this list, but it's free to you. I've done all the hard work. There's no baloney in this guide, just pure marketing gold. It's, it's all crammed into two pages for you to save as a reference. It's designed to keep you from making dumb mistakes when it comes to evaluating your marketing choices and strategies. Stop falling for things which don't work. Start doing the things which will work, guaranteed. Just send me an email. Include your first and last name in it. Give me the email address where you want the survival guide sent. Include your cell number in case I need to text you if something is out of whack in your email. It's as easy as that. Brick and block podcast at gmail.com. Be sure and spell out the and, A-N-D. Brick and block podcast at gmail.com. And now, here's our Marketing 1A episode, Basic Marketing for Mason Contractors. This is a checklist of things you need, things you need to know. I've got 10 of them listed. Here's 10 that are really important. Number one, a website. You need one. In 2021, a business is not perceived as real without one. Number two, website hosting. Now, this is where your business website lives on the Internet. Your potential customers can search for your service online and, and find your business. It might look like an advertising flyer or a magazine or a book, but think of it as a sales rep for your company who will work 24-7, 365, never get tired, never ask for a raise, and perfectly tell your story. Does it get any better? Number three, hosting. Insider secrets. There are 
Several critical things to know about website hosting. A. Speed. People are impatient, and so are the search engines. You get higher rankings with higher website speeds. B. Mobile. Your website must be easily visible and searchable on mobile. It needs to be mobile friendly. And most searches these days are done on mobile, and that is a trend that is increasing. Mobile is important. C. Secure. Your domain name needs to be HTTPS and not HTTP. Sounds like a small detail, but the S in it is very, very important. The S stands for security. And if your domain does not have this, it, if it doesn't say HTTPS, Google will display a note in it that it is, quote, not secure, unquote, which may discourage potential clients from going into it. D. New content. A website with no ongoing new content is less attractive to search engines, which are constantly looking to see if you've added anything new. So newer content gets pushed up higher in the search rankings. E. A blog. Think of it as something like Facebook. But it's a page on your website where you or an employee can post news about your company, like new contracts, completed jobs, new materials, new services, etc., etc., etc. F. Managed hosting. It's important to have your website looked after by someone professional who knows what's going on. Number four. Social media and directories. In the old days... Contractors used to leave stacks of business cards on the counters or thumbtack to the walls or bulletin boards of various companies in the area. These days, the cards have been replaced with posts, P-O-S-T-S, -S, posts to social media sites like Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and more. And by being found in online directories like Yelp, Google My Business, Manta, Yahoo, and so on. All of these are available without charge for your company to use to display your business contact info. And regardless of the size of your business, it can profit from posting in social media or listing in directories. And all of this can be done easily by a solo entrepreneur or a staff person at a larger contractor or other service provider. Number five, video. Did you know, did you know that YouTube is the number two ranked search engine tool and is owned by Google, which is the number one ranked search engine tool? YouTube allows everyone, from kids to contractors, to have its own channel and upload or post videos on it for free. What kind of videos? The ones you have on your smartphone will actually work. What can they do? Well, they can explain who your company is and the type of work that it does and how people can contact you. Really? Yes. And without charge. Really? Number six, keywords. Will they call your name? It used to be suggested when naming a company that your name said what your company did, like Manny's Masonry, Charlie's Chimneys, and so on. You know what I'm saying. Today, some folks don't know the lingo of the masonry construction industry, so when they need some of it, they might search for retaining walls or block walls or brick walls or buildings. They might know tuck pointing or fireplace repair even. Find out how your potential customers describe your services and products and use those terms as keywords in your marketing. Here's what's important to know. 
Know the terms people are using in order to find you. As a matter of fact, I used to teach my clients at the initial contact with the prospective customer, to ask them something like this. Hey, I know you said you found me online, but can I ask you, if you remember, what did you actually type into Google to find us? I practically guarantee you that almost nobody is typing Smith & Sons construction. Instead, they are typing search terms. Remember that and put it into play, and you'll go a long way towards surviving in business. And said another way, when people want stuff, they search for what it is and not for the name of the company who might have it. However, by searching for what it is you do, a prospect just might find you and then learn who you are. Appreciate the difference. Number seven, customer lists. This is so important. In fact, the list of your customers might be the most valuable asset you have, particularly starting off. In a minute, I'll explain why. First, let me explain what it is and what it most certainly is not. Your customer list should not be contained on a yellow legal pad. It needs to be on a spreadsheet on a computer. The customer list should contain, at the minimum, the name of the business customer, the main contact person, the phone, cell number, email address. A separate list is your prospect list. Same information as above, but contained on a separate list, a separate tab, if you will, on your spreadsheet. A supplier list is also needed. Everything from your insurance people to your various material suppliers, rental companies, you name it. Again, same pieces of info for each. Even a competitor list is also something pretty handy to have because you never know when you might need to talk to some of them. Here's the takeaway. Notice that the lists are varied and they are separate. This way you can send out an email to just some of your lists and not necessarily to all of your lists at the same time. Number eight, why customer lists? Over a period of time, this list should grow to something incredible in size and importance to you. But a primary marketing value to you is this. By means of email, you can easily contact everyone on your various lists in a matter of moments, couldn't you? So let's say that you were really low on work. And for example, you could certainly send out an email and offer some amazing deals for next week, couldn't you? Maybe you have some equipment setting idle right now and you might offer it for a short-term rental. If you were bidding a job and you needed a particular specialty, it would be easy to reach out and ask those on your various lists the, do you know a company which does thus and so? The point is that lists make things easy to do and in very little time. Nine, text message marketing. With a customer list, you can easily send out messages to your list. More important, the receivers of the messages are more likely to open the messages and to open them quickly. People are more likely to open text messages than to open email messages, which sometimes get ignored, don't they? Today's technologies allow you to easily send out text messages to your entire list if that's your desire. Just a few clicks, in a few minutes, message launched. And here's the takeaway. The bigger your list, the more likely you are to find on it the help you need. And then number 10, auto messaging. Keeping in touch with clients and prospects is critical to business success. You want to always be top of mind to your customers. The first company they think of when starting a new project. How can you do this? You've gotten newsletters before, right? Maybe delivered by email or these days by snail mail. They are deliberately short, somewhat interesting to at least some people. The main ingredient? The newsletter sender has touched your company. Seem like a lot of work? 
not with the available technology. Many newsletters are set up a year in advance and are programmed as to which date and what time they get automatically launched. Easy peasy. It does require a customer list and a simple email program. Okay, team, that's it for today. You can reach out to us by email, brickandblockpodcast at gmail.com. Be sure to spell out the word and, A-N-D, brickandblockpodcast at gmail.com. Be sure and include your first and last name in your cell number. Be sure and, and join us for the next episode of the of the Brick and Block podcast. And make sure that you hit the subscribe or the follow button. We want you here for the next episode, for every episode. Now, for the Brick and Block podcast, this is Coach Gary. Thanks for stopping by, everybody.